when Dracula, the Wolfman, Frankenstein, and a host of other ghouls conspires to take over the world, there's only one thing standing in their way. The Monster Squad, a group of kids who are obsessed with horror movies and have figured out Dracula's plot and want to stop him before it's too late. In this 1987 cult classic, ridiculous, over-the-top, hilarious movie, well, let's dig into this. I'm Connor is Gary. And I'm Austin Johnson. Welcome to Filmgasm. So the Monster Squad is our connecting bonus to Salem's Lot. Uh, obviously the theme of, you know, vampires. Yeah. In case that wasn't very clear. But... <laughs> Again, you know, it's also got a creepy old house. So there are True. some good uh, good connectors in here. It is our third choice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll be honest here. We intended to do what we do in the shadows, but we couldn't get a hold of it in time. And then we intended to do uh, Vampire's Kiss with Nicolas Cage. But again, we couldn't get a hold of it in time. So we went with the Monster Squad. We didn't settle. This is not, we, didn't not, we did not not want to do this. This is going to be done at some point yeah, anyway. We just moved this up. Yeah. So... Yeah, of course, you know, a horror podcast is going to do the Monster Squad at some point. It's yeah. a good gateway movie. It's like it's partially a horror movie, partially kind of a preteen comedy. Would you be comfortable showing this to like your kid in like uh, what at what age do you think? 13? Okay. Yeah, 12, 13? <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. watched this considerably younger than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm, tr- I'm trying to think what's a, what's a good answer. <laughs> no, yeah, I think... Uh, well, I, I don't think how many like little kids are interested in this... Uh, That's this, a good... That, this 80s one. These you, have days. Di- you have a different... Uh, yeah, you have a different... That's a shame. Oh, I just had... No, that, no. I know, man. I know. I just had a, you know, sound of I, silence this is, moment. This is the first time I'd seen this. Yeah. I had a ritual. Quite fun. And a lot, a lot better than Sam's lot. <laughs> Significantly. When I was a kid... I had a ritual at our local Hollywood video. Remember that store? And I, I do. It was like the it was like Blockbuster, for those of you who don't know what that is. Yeah, you go rent things. Probably a lot of you out there. Yeah. And uh, God, I'm an old man now. And I, the two movies I wanted to rent more than anything in the world, I don't know why I never just bought these movies, The Monster Squad and Harry and the Hendersons. Bigfoot. Got to see that movie. Got to get that Squatch. It's a great movie. <laughs> we're, and obviously, we're going to do that one day, too. I'm calling it right now. When we do the, the Bigfoot horror movie, Willow Creek, our bonus is going to be Harry and the Hendersons. Yeah, of course. I don't know when we're doing it, but we're doing it. Yeah. Because <laughs> that movie is so fucking scary. It's it, Because, uh, to me, I think, just because I've always had a Bigfoot problem. I talked about that in several episodes. But that movie, there's a scene where like they pick Harry up, and he, he, th- he think he's dead, and he roars from up on top of the car. His like face comes down. I had nightmares for years, <laughs> but I kept watching the movie because it's really yeah. funny, and I love John Lithgow. So, <laughs> yeah. But back to Monster Squad. <laughs> I always associate these two movies together because I would try to rent one or the other every time I was at a store because of Hollywood Video. Yeah. And when I found out they were finally releasing both of these on DVD, I was first in line. I yeah. These immediately. <laughs> now I have them both on Blu-ray. <laughs> yeah, you have multiple copies of the uh, Monster Squad. Yes, I do. Multiple copies of Harry and the Hendersons as well. There you go. <laughs> so we will have no problem when we do that one. Yeah. Uh, so the Monster Squad is, uh, you know, follows the tradition of Universal movie monsters, bringing together Dracula and the Wolfman and Frankenstein's monster and the creature from the Black Lagoon and the Mummy and I think that's all of them. Yeah. <laughs> that about wraps it up. A lot of them are kind of useless, like the mummy and Gilman, the creature. They're kind of just there for background noise. They don't do anything significant. But the kids are all pretty entertaining kids. Uh, yes. It's, you know, they're like the Goonies and the Sandlot. It's one of those groups. They're like the D list. <laughs> and I love that the tagline on the poster is You know who to call when you have ghosts. Who do you call when you have monsters? Ah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So 80s. Oh, extremely 80s. Uh, so this movie was uh, written and directed by Fred Decker and Shane Black. Decker would go on to uh, 
direct movies like RoboCop 3. Yeah. And uh, together they did movies like Night of the Creeps, and they actually wrote uh, the new the newest Predator movie together, which sucked something awful. <laughs> Shane Black is a strange filmmaker, because he's got some great movies, but also some terrific misfires. Like... <laughs> Like Predator. Like Predator and Iron Man 3. But The Nice Guys is fucking gold. Yeah, incredible. So I don't really know what to think about Shane Black. The guy's weird. And I didn't actually, this was the first time I realized he was, he wrote this. I didn't know that. It's awesome. So we got, as our cast, we've got Duncan Rager as Count Dracula. In a lot of circles, he's considered one of the best movie Draculas. Which I would not say at all, but I, I no. like him. <laughs> but he's very much like a, you know, costume party at the mall kind of Dracula. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, boy. And he's uh, he's had steady acting work in various TV shows. He had a recurring role on the 1990s series Zorro. He played Don Diego de la Vega. And yeah, he's he's done a lot of conventions for this movie. He's known primarily for playing Dracula in the Monster Squad. Every, almost everyone involved is known for their role in this. This became yeah. a big cult hit. Mm-hmm. Tom Noonan is Frankenstein's monster. Fuck yeah, we love Tom Noonan. Yeah, why? Yeah, how can you not? One of the best parts of Hell on Wheels. God, dude. That guy was so unstable. I loved it. Yeah. And then um, he plays Francis Dollarhide in Manhunter. Yes, and he just pops up in so many different things. The guy's prolific as hell. He's one of the best that guys. Ever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so cool. Uh, 80s mom, Mary Ellen Trainer plays uh, Sean's mom. She's a mom in almost every 80s movie. Yeah. It's amazing. She's the Goonies mom. <laughs> the mom of the 80s. Oh, hell yeah. And all the kids, not going to lie, nobody went anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I look, I like was... Trying to see if any of them, yeah, were. I was like, are are any of these guys like child stars? No. No. Yeah. Not at all. Nothing on the the old IMDb. Mm Mm-mm. The the guy who plays scary German guy, uh, Leonardo Simino, I knew I'd... I I, I recognize his face all the time. He's in a ton of stuff. He died in 2012. But he is the diamond broker in Before the Devil Knows You're Dead. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Which we will be talking about in a few weeks. Yes. And his, I love his character. He's a scary German guy. But the subtlety in how they portray that guy and like the things that he says, brilliant performance, Mm -hmm. brilliant character. And, you know, you you briefly see him with a uh, concentration camp uh, number tattooed on his arm. Yeah. And after they're talking about monsters and they say, you know, well, you sure know a lot about monsters. And he just says, as a matter of fact, I do. As he closes the door, chills. Just yikes. Oof whole different kind of monster. Oh, yes. Very true. And, yeah, I adore this movie to death. It's so 80s. So impossibly Extremely. 80s. Yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> like, the montage, for instance. Oh, my gosh. With, like, that stupid 80s song that I don't even know what it's called. I don't care. I'm never going to listen to it outside this movie. No, no. But it's the perfect 80s preteen, mo- you know, monster movie montage song. The film has an IMDb score of 7.1, Rotten Tomatoes score of 67%. Kind of right in the middle there. And uh, it, was a, it was a huge bomb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Made no money. $12 million budget, grossed only 3.8 mil. But it eventually found an audience. Yeah. A lot of these movies are like that. Especially from the 80s. Oh, yeah. And that's, you know, that's, that's fine. I prefer those kind of movies. You know, movies that fell off the radar... That never go away. Picked up because of, yeah. yeah. The Thing was one of those. Yeah. Cold oh, yeah. movies are the fucking best. Yeah. They're unique. There's nothing like that out there. There's no other movie like The Monster Squad. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. So let's dig into this. So The Monster Squad are this, it's this group of preteens who idolize classic monster movies and the monsters in them. They're always debating, you know, what, how many, like, how do you, Kill a Wolfman besides a silver bullet. Is there any other way to do that? Yeah. No, not really. It's fun to talk about, though. It is fun. Let's talk about it. Is there any other way to kill a Wolfman besides a silver bullet? I don't think there is. No. But it's fun to talk about. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I think that in the Lon Chaney Wolfman, 
the the old gypsy woman does say, uh, you can get shot by a silver bullet, you get stabbed by a silver knife, or you get beat with a stick with a silver handle, which always made me laugh. Like, does the stick have to be silver or just the handle? Just the handle, so the rest is just, just a normal stick. So you're just beating a werewolf with a stick. Yeah. <laughs> That's my option. <laughs> That's what happens in the movie. Yeah. Watch well, Junior gets beat to death with a stick. <laughs> Uh, what were some of their other questions? Is Frankenstein the name of the monster or the name of the guy? Yeah. Obviously, the guy. I remember this meme that said, uh, Frankenstein enters a bodybuilding competition and finds out that he's very wrong in thinking <laughs> what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> I just see, like, you know, everyone else is working out and he's, like, stitching body parts together. Like, why is nobody else doing this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um... So their their members are Sean, club leader, mm-hmm. who's a little arrogant, frankly. His younger sister Phoebe, who finally gets to be in the club after getting Frankenstein on their team. Yeah. Uh, his friends Patrick, who's kind of like his shadow, and uh, Horace, who they just call Fat Kid. <laughs> Can't do that these days. <laughs> and then there's Rudy, who's this like. High schooler who I never really understand why he's with them. I think he's just. A, I think he just has no friends. Like you really have nothing better to do. Yeah. I think he just wants to make sure they don't get hurt. I think he's just a good, a good kid. Good older guy. Yeah. It's like when Horace gets, you know, bullied by those two assholes. Yeah. He immediately steps up, like you know, challenges his own street cred here, and takes on the bullies. And yeah. I love that. There's so many questions I want answered about Rudy. Who are you? Who are you, Rudy? <laughs> this film is a little dated uh, with the uh, the gay slurs. That's, yeah. That keeps it back. A little bit tough there. Yeah. A little tough. That EJ kid, what a fuck. I know. Jesus. Satisfying watching him eat that candy bar. <laughs> so the kids are, uh, they're walking home and they're talking about, like, uh, could Wolfman drive a car? <laughs> I love that. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff I want to talk about. Like, of course, you know, he wears pants. Of course, he can drive a car. Yeah, he can do what he wants. Yeah, if he can put his yeah, put his foot on the pedal, his paw. I love the one kid's like he could if he had to, like very aggressively, <laughs> like he's very opinionated on this. Let's let's be honest, guys. If it came down to it, <laughs> wait, you know, you don't want to see his wolf dork. <laughs> oh man, be a great band name, Wolf Dork. Wolf Dork. <laughs> but I want it to be like smooth jazz. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's like... Like, out of nowhere. Prog rock. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, also, I don't know if you know this, there's a documentary about this, about the the uh, legacy of this movie called Wolfman's Got Nards. No. It <laughs> came out last year. I did year. not know that. I think it was produced by Draft House. Really? Yeah, they were having a showing of it. Uh, I almost went, but I, I couldn't make it work. But uh, I think Fat Kid was there. <laughs> oh, there you <laughs> a go. A couple other people. Dracula. And uh, before this, I forgot to mention, we open on Transylvania in the 1800s with Abraham Van Helsing going after Dracula. And uh, he's you know, trying to stop Dracula from taking over the world. He uses a virgin to open this portal to limbo that supposedly stopped everything. But now Dracula's back mm-hmm. and Helsing's dead and there's nothing standing in the way of him conquering the world with this amulet. It's not very clear, but no, who gives no. a shit? We're, we're not here for clear. <laughs> And uh, Sean's mom gives him a journal that supposedly belonged to Van Helsing, who in this yes. universe was like a real person. And it's written in German, so he can't read it. I love that the diary of Van Helsing just happened to end up in like a house down the street, and mom happened to go there for like a yard sale and picked up huh. this book. And the book has the spell that's needed to save the world. <coughs> uh, I love coincidence in these movies. Frankly, I think if I'd seen this for the first time today, I would like it significantly less. It's one of those movies where I know it's nostalgia fueling my love of this movie. I I still really like it. You I don't? Found, I found it, found thing. I thought it was really funny. Maybe I'm wrong about that then. No, I. <laughs> well, I guess we'll see when we get to like our proper rating, but. <laughs> but but I, I see what you're saying. But I, no, I do think it's very funny. Hmm. Good. That's good. So. Dracula gets all his people up and running. 
Here we go. Gets Frankenstein out of this uh, this plane. Gets him. Uh, gets Gilman, the creature in the Black Lagoon, out of a local swamp. He just happened to be in this swamp too. The mummy escapes from the the museum. He also mm-hmm. just happened to be here. And <laughs> this the Wolf Man, who is probably my favorite of the group, because he's just a guy who's trying to stop all this. But when the moon rises. He's a wolf man, unable to, you know, bend to, Drac- un- to Dracula's will. He's stuck. But I love the regular dude who's trying to, you know, lock me up. Yeah, yeah. Scene. It's great. Perfect werewolf. And every you can't kill this guy without a silver bullet. He gets blown up and he comes back. Because you can't kill a vampire. You can't kill a werewolf without a silver bullet. Silver bullet, it's got to be. We heard them talking about it earlier. The, the only way. It all comes back. <laughs> so, the Monster Squad... They want to know what's up with this diary, so they go to this the scary German guy and see if they can uh, he can help them translate it. And he turns out to be a very nice person. Yes. And a former concentration camp prisoner. And he translates the diary and becomes pretty much one of the gang. Comes totally willing to help them out. And the diary describes in great detail the spell to, to stop Dracula's plan using yes. this amulet that's composed of concentrated good and Dracula wants to corrupt this amulet. And one day, every 100 years, as the forces of good and evil balance, the amulet that's indestructible becomes vulnerable. And if Dracula destroys the amulet, then he rules the world, I guess? Yeah. No more good? No more good. No more balance? This is 87. Uh, There's not any more good in the world. This is the late 80s. (laughs) Good's been dead for a while. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so they realize that what they have to do is they got to get this amulet, they got to do the spell, and that opens a hole in the universe and the monsters get sucked into limbo. Mm-hmm. Which, not going to lie, I thought was so cool when I was a kid. Just this big whirlwind that sucked everything up. I thought that was so cool. I still, pretty, I still think it's really It's still cool. pretty badass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling like a child again talking about this one. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> so... Van Helsing failed to stop Dracula 100 years ago and somehow ended up in Louisiana (laughs) and left his diary in this house. (laughs) Or maybe he just went to America to get away from Dracula and hide the amulet and Dracula followed him here. There you go. After 100 years. (laughs) Focus. It's It's not very clear. I'm trying, but no, it's not working out. I love that scene in the uh, in the plane where Dracula's trying to get Frankenstein's monster and those two guys, the pilots, one of them's just like, you know, well, why, why should I be happy? I'm up here. I'm just flying this dead guy. The other guy's like, does he complain? They want more peanuts. And the other guy immediately goes to, you're right, I'm having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> the dialogue there is so bad. <laughs> There's no... Tr- uh. Yeah, I'm having a great time. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great job. I love it. Dust some peanuts out of me. Hey. <laughs> or you know we'll be there. Mm. So, Frankenstein, once he gets awakened, he wanders into the forest where he encounters Phoebe and becomes, they become friends because Phoebe's really nice to him. Because Frankenstein, all he wants is to be loved. Aw. I actually really like that. <laughs> I like the way they do Frankenstein. <laughs> me too. He's my favorite. Phoebe takes Frankenstein to the Monster Squad and shows him off, and they all freak the fuck out, obviously, because it's Frankenstein. <laughs> she tells them not to be chicken shit, and they... <laughs> I love that. They bring Frankenstein up into the clubhouse, and I'm wondering, like, how the hell did they get Frankenstein into the clubhouse? Is he smart enough to climb a ladder? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like he's pretty heavy. He'd bring that thing right? down. Right? Yeah, that guy's a beast. And he decides to help them out, that he's going to join their team instead of Dracula. And they teach him how to say 80s shit, like bogus. Yeah, rad. (laughs) Give me a break. (laughs) What else? He says bogus. He says give me a break. Uh, He says something I don't remember. Bogus. (laughs) Bogus. So fucking dated. We should bring, we need to bring bogus back to the lexicon. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Bogus and tubular. 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 Ah, That was my skull. (laughs) Just think of Sean Penn and Fast Times. Whenever I hear any of those phrases. <laughs> Tabular. <sighs> so the Wolfman 
we meet him again. He's been calling the cops, trying to stop Dracula. I feel like he's not making enough effort there. Like, the local fucking PD is going to be able to do anything against Dracula. But they all think it's prank calls, and I love he transforms in the phone booth, and he's like, you can see his face bubbling. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, Stan Winston did the makeup effects for this. And yeah, he's he's really good. He's the guy who did Jurassic Park. The amulet is buried in a stone room beneath the house that Dracula and the monsters now took over. And the uh, the monster squad realizes, you know, oh, there's this old creepy house. That's where Drac- That's where Van Helsing's diary was found. It's probably where the amulet is. We need to go stop him. And they go there, and Frankenstein is immediately taken out by a bomb. <laughs> Rubble falls on him, and they're like, no! Frank, no! Frank! Frank. <laughs> Call him Frank. Frankie! <laughs> oh. Frank, oh. Frank the Tank! Frank the Tank. And uh, now that they have no monster on their side, suddenly it's a lot more scary in there. Wolfman shows up and immediately doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. He's just like, ah! And Sean tells Fat Kid to kick him in the nose! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And so Fat Kid slams <coughs> Wolfman right in the goods yep. and then remarks, Wolfman's got nards. And that's where the documentary title came from. <laughs> I love Wolfman just doubling over in pain, like, ah! <laughs> Jump on your heels! They escape and they find, uh, like they find themselves trapped in a hallway. Dracula's coming one end, Wolfman's coming the other. Three vampire brides are coming in another direction as you start looking for a secret passageway. Which, it's amazing that they find one. And they fall to the ground. And what they find in there is the amulet. And they grab it, and Dracula tries to take it from them. Very poorly, I might add. Uh, he's kind of just like, give me that, give me that, hey, give me that. <laughs> come on. <laughs> like he's, you know you want to. Like he's not super powerful, he can't just rip them apart. And Fat Kid grabs a slice of pizza out of his pocket and slams it up against Dracula's face. Yes, yes. Incapacitating him because of the garlic. <laughs> Genius. Genius. And they get away with the amulet. Never underestimate the fat kid. Never. Fat kid. That's so sad. At least, well, you know, like, I guess Chunk's not any better, is it? (laughs) In the Goonies. Yeah. Do the Trump Shovel. They've all got a fat kid. All the 80s movies that are like this, they got a fat kid. You know, Stand By Me had, uh, uh, Gordo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gordo. So... Yeah, that's just how it works. Mm-hmm. Got it. There's got to be a fat kid. It's like Pirates of the Caribbean, you know. The Dutchman must always have a captain. <laughs> the 80s kids must always have a fat kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, even in uh, It. Yeah. Yeah. Ben. <laughs> I'm trying to think, is there anything else that's happened like recently that's like kid group like Stranger Things? They don't really have a fat kid in their group. But it's usually a thing, yeah. Like when it's eighties, eighties based or made in the eighties, yeah. I don't really watch a lot of you know modern yeah. coming of age stuff. Yeah, it's typically t- they typically tend to be a lot more serious. Yeah, in the eighties, yeah. it was just like kids getting into goofy shit. Let's have fun. Yeah. <laughs> so they get to the scary German guy, and he tells them that they the incantation has to be read by a virgin, apparently a female virgin, and so they go to one of the kid's sisters, who's this like you know, 17, 18 year old blonde girl. And they try to get her to read the incantation. And she intend, you know, she insists that she's a virgin. Turns out she's not. Cause Steve doesn't count. <laughs> 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 Makes me wonder what that story is. <laughs> so midnight's approaching. The monster squad goes to a local cathedral to make their stand. And I love the, they're like, why don't we just do it over at Burger King? This isn't very, uh, very sacred. <laughs> and you can see the 80s Burger King in the background. Yes. Classic. Dracula is pissed. He goes over to their clubhouse with a whole bunch of dynamite for some reason. I don't know why Dracula has He's dynamite. Up. Yeah. He blows up the clubhouse. And that's when Sean's father, uh, police detective Dell, who is having issues with his mom the whole movie that doesn't really get resolved. It's kind of really that important, admittedly. And Dracula kills his partner, blows him up. And see, they, uh, Dell and his, uh, Sean's mom see Dracula turn into a bat. 
and now it's on. Now everyone's like, what the fuck is going on? Whew. So the incantations have to be read on the door, like on the steps of the cathedral because the doors are locked and they're vulnerable now because, you know, Dracula can't get into the church, but he can fuck them up there. <laughs> so they use, you know, Lisa, the sister, starts reading the incantation, but it doesn't work because she's not a virgin. The monsters are closing in and they decide to fight back. So scary German guy realizes Phoebe works as a virgin, so she starts reading the German incantation with his help, and the squad starts taking out the monsters. Earlier, the mummy got unraveled really easily. Yes. Kind of useless. Gilman shows up. Fat kid takes him out with a shotgun, which was so uh, cheesy. Saves EJ. (laughs) And Rudy shows some serious uh, remorse. In this, like he kills the vampires, yeah, and he gets the wolf man with a silver bullet. But then when he sees it's a guy, you see that flicker in his eye, like, oh my god, I Fuck. killed a man, yeah. But Changes the wolf, you. yeah, the wolf man's like, thank you. But before that, you know, wolf man gets blown up with a stick of dynamite in the pants, indeed, and then heals. Fuck, man, it's crazy. It's brutal, <laughs> it's pretty brutal. Oh, so they're all dead. Dracula's it, he shows up to. Fight the he like shoots this beam of light at German guy. Yeah, yeah. Which did nothing. That was always so weird to me. Like, did he take his soul? Like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and he grabs Phoebe and is gonna is gonna bite her, is gonna kill her. And who should show up but Frank? Oh, every time I watch this, I get like, yes. <laughs> Frank! Yep. Frank puts his arm on Dracula's back and is like, nope. And throws him into the church, and he lands on. He gets impaled on the uh, the fence. Phoebe finishes the incantation, opens the portal limbo, and the monsters start getting sucked in. Dracula grabs Sean, tries to drag him in with him. Yes. And Sean impales him on a wooden, uh, gets him in in the chest with a wooden stake. Ah, so great. Patrick gets Sean, and Van Helsing shows up, grabs Dracula, and is like, "Ah, you motherfucker! I got you now." <laughs> Oh, I love this movie to death. I really do. <laughs> what a great way to get, yeah, to to retrieve, to get Dracula, yeah, to defeat him. Oh, yeah. Ah, bastard. <laughs> I watch this every Halloween. This is one of my Halloween yeah. rotation movies. <laughs> and regrettably, Frankenstein gets sucked into. Phoebe's yeah. trying to save him. Yep. She throws his, uh, her, she throws her teddy bear at him. He takes it with her, with him. Aw. Sad. Frankenstein sacrifices himself, knowing he's not supposed to be here. Bing bong, bing bong. The portal closes, and then the army shows up after Eugene, the youngest member of the group, sends the army a letter that says, like, please help me fight the monsters. So the whole fucking army showed up. <laughs> they must have had nothing better to do. Yeah, sure. This Hey, this kid said he uh, is fighting monsters. We gotta go help. So they're like, what the hell's going on here? And John's like, well, let me tell you something, sir. Hands him a business card, and he's like, we're the Monster Squad. Yeah. I wish this had been successful, because I want a goddamn sequel. Hell yeah. I think a sequel <laughs> would be great. I think this would hit big time today. I I hope so. You I know, think if they if they did it with, you know, kids that are, you know, they made this, the Monster Squad, if there are kids that are, you know, people know, yeah, made a decent little cast out of it. I can see this maybe one day getting a remake. Yeah. I don't want it, but I'd see it. It could happen. Yeah. So what are some things you really liked about this one? I, again, the, the consistency of, of the comedy is is always there. There's never like a five minutes where you're not cracking up at something. The way someone's the way someone's moving or just some, like you said, that dialogue. You're like, what? <laughs> it's great. And I, I, who's your favorite character? Oof, my favorite character. Probably Fat Kid. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, oh, especially of the squad. Yeah, I love him. Yeah. Shotgun. <laughs> yeah, come on. He's hilarious just because he's so scared, but he helps him out anyway. Yeah. It's like, and he's always got I, food on him, just like Chunk. I guess I'll just keep going with you guys, yeah. <laughs> Shit. Well, I love Frank. Yeah, yeah, me too. It's one of my favorite Frank, versions of Frank. Frank and him are probably the two best. <laughs> but I think it's a great ensemble. I think the cast works really well. I yes. think they are all clearly having fun. Yeah. And it's a real shame this didn't hit. 
87. Like, heyday of the 80s. I think this is the same year that Lost Boys came out. Yeah. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Probably stole some thunder. I would say so. I wonder, <laughs> let's look up, when, when did this one come out exactly? Like, what, what was the date? The date of release was August 14th, 1987. Let's look up Lost Boys. Lost Boys came out July 31st, 1987. Yeah. So around that same time. Yeah. Ah, oh, damn. That might have something to do with it. Probably. And Lost Boys has those those actors that really pop. Ooh. In the 80s? In the 80s, yes. Kiefer Sullivan, Corey Heim, Corey Feldman? Yeah. In, yeah. The, in, in terms of performance... Oh no! No, but, but you know what I mean. Yeah, they were the they were the box office the guys in yeah. '87. They were the guys, without a doubt. This movie stood, didn't stand a chance. <laughs> um, well, I'm gonna go ahead and give this film a solid eight. Yeah, I give it a seven. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna watch it again. It probably will break into my rotation of like the Halloween to October. Just out of curiosity, what what's holding? What do you think is holding it back? Holding it back for for like for you? Like, I don't think I don't think it looks the greatest like he's and then th- there are plenty of times in the plot where it's like okay yeah there's a lot of that <laughs> well like the mu- the mummy the mummy you're like okay yeah that's okay though you know that's not a problem i don't think it's just i think there are things that are holding it back and maybe it is that uh oh what was the budget wasn't the budget like 12 million 12 million i don't know i don't know that's i don't know where it really went i mean the makeup but also i've only seen it once that's my first time so yeah. a, a re you know a rewatch you know can change things very true uh, now that I know like exactly what I'm getting into, you know it can it can it can change it. For Considering sure. how cheap it really does look, like where did the money go? Yeah, I was just thinking. There's the no same big thing. name actor in this. Like, like who knows? Weird. <laughs> I love the fact that our heroes are horror movie geeks. That's great too. That's yeah. fun. To, it's fun to watch people like the banter about Wolfman and. Is there any other way to kill him? That's funny. Those are conversations I have with yeah. my friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, but I love that if this were to happen, if Dracula showed up and was going to take over the world in this small town, this is exactly who would try to stop him. Is horror movie nerds like us who know how this works and how and like believe it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Believe in the magic. I love when he's sitting on the roof of his house with binoculars at, at the drive-in, <laughs> watching that stupid horror movie. Yeah, Groundhog Day Part Twelve. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> ah, yeah, just. I feel like I, if I, me as a kid would get along so well with these kids. Oh man, I would be in the monster. Be spot. a blast. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> I, I want to get a business card. That'd be cool. It would be cool. Be a cool little piece of memorabilia. Yeah. <laughs> if I, uh, from the, I want. Uh, <laughs> I want like a um, I want Dracula's cape. Well, that'd be. Really cool. It's so... The amulet? Yeah. Oh, the amulet. That would be sweet. A replica amulet. <laughs> That's nerdy. That is extremely <laughs> nerdy. Dracula in this movie is is not too over the top. There, mm-hmm. it, there's At times, yes. I think the costume is over the top. Yeah, yeah. I think the costume could have been a little bit more subtle. But compared to like Richard Roxburgh and Van Helsing, he is pretty restrained. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. Richard Roxburgh is fucking Count Chocula. Like, straight up. <laughs> it's uh, it's tough to take him seriously in that yeah, movie. Yeah, I agree. But in this one, I get why people say he's a he's a great Dracula. Okay. I, I think, understand. I, I understand. think Tom Noonan, like, for the monsters, I think Tom Noonan really steals the show. Fuck yeah, style. Noonan's great. <laughs> Noonan is fantastic. Bogus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so great. Oh, man. <laughs> I guess that wraps it up for us, the Monster Squad. Great movie, um, fun bonus episode. Considering this was the third choice, yeah, worked yeah, out no pretty kidding. well. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> That's gonna be the case. We'll we'll have ideas, and sometimes these we don't own everything. So. We don't. We own most of it. We, we rely. We rely on you know, um, yeah, these streaming services, and sometimes they are not. You know, they're not on there. So, and I've mentioned in the past, I still do Netflix discs through the mail. Yeah, big help for a lot of these movies that for aren't available sure, on streaming. For sure. And that I'm not sure I want to buy yet. Well, we did that with we've we've done that a lot with uh, PSH with Philip yeah. Seymour Hoffman. We did it with Polanski. We did it with Vincent Price. Yeah, John Wayne. Yeah, yeah. this yeah. really helps us. Yeah, and uh, yeah for PSH, and then for the one we got after that, big gonna be a big help. Oh, huge help! Yeah, <laughs> we'll talk to you guys about that one later. Oh yeah, we like to keep you in suspense. So 
stay tuned for Parasite on Sunday. Had a lot of fun doing that one. Oh yeah. And then next week we're going we're going back to real life with Zodiac. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just keep keep on checking this out, man. We got shit ca- happening every week. Three episodes a week. Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. <clears throat> and yeah, we're gonna keep doing it as long as you're gonna keep listening. Yeah. So even if you don't listen all, we'll probably still do it. Yeah. Because <laughs> we're crazy. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Bogus. Ah. Take it easy.